Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of the all-new B-Link GTR. Now, if you're not familiar with this little mini PC, I've done a full review. I'll leave a link in the description. But basically what we have here is a third gen Ryzen 5 powered mini PC that actually puts out some decent performance. And as you can see, there's a lot of I.O. on this little box also. So in this video, we're going to see how the GTR handles some of our favorite emulators from Dreamcast all the way up to Wii U. If you want to do Neo Geo, FBA, Main, PlayStation 1, or even Sega Saturn, it's going to run at full speed on this box. I mean, I have no doubt about it given the specs we have here, but I'm really interested to see how this handles the higher end stuff. But before we jump right into it, I just want to give you a quick rundown on the basic specs here. There's a lot to this little box that I'm not going to mention in this video, but I do have that full review video with pretty much everything you need to know. And I also tested out a lot of PC games in that video, so definitely check it out. So for the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 3550H. This is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU with a base clock of 2.1 and a boost up to 3.7. The GPU is the built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics up to 1200 MHz, and I do have 16 GB of DDR4 at 2666 in this unit, but you could go with 8 if you really wanted to. The configuration that I have here is running in dual channel, and you're going to get the best performance running your RAM in dual channel with these Ryzen APUs. And finally, the operating system, Windows 10 Home, 64-bit. So without further ado, let's jump right into some emulation testing. So first up, we have some PSP using PPSSPP, and I'm at 4x resolution. This is handling it just fine. We have Tekken 6 going here. And with each one of these games you're going to see running in this video, I will have the name of the system, the name of the emulator, and if I'm upscaled or not, the name of the game. And in the top left-hand corner, I do have Afterburner running, so we can see everything that's going on with this mini PC. But as PSP emulation goes, you're going to have no trouble at all running any PSP game as long as it's compatible with the PPSSPP emulator, including the God of War titles. Here's Midnight Club 3, 4X resolution, no frame skip, no hacks on whatsoever, and I do have filtering going. It's running perfectly smooth here at 60 FPS, and believe it or not, this is a harder one to run than Chains of Olympus. Next up, we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator, and I'm even upscaled to 1440p. You're not going to have any issues running Dreamcast on this device either. And I'm pretty sure I could have went to 4K with this, or as close as we can get with the 4x3 aspect ratio, but unfortunately my game capture will only do up to 1440p at 60fps. Moving over to PS2 with PCSX2 1.7, this is the development build. Using DirectX 11, 720p with Gran Turismo 4, but the next game you're going to see I did have to drop it down. It just wouldn't run at full speed at 720p without a bunch of hacks on, and I personally don't like turning them all on. So I usually leave the settings at balance to see what we could do, and it does a pretty decent job, but keep in mind that the harder to run games just won't upscale really well without a bunch of hacks. GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator is spot on at 1440p using the Vulcan back end. I also tested OpenGL, but AMD isn't great with OpenGL, so I would definitely stick with Vulcan or DirectX 11. But as you can see here, we have Billy Hatcher running at 60fps, and overall the Dolphin emulator just works amazingly on this unit, whether you want to do GameCube or Wii, and you'll see some Wii games coming up in just a second. Yeah! 
F-Zero GX does seem to struggle on lower end devices, but I'm at 1440p with this one here. Got a constant 60. When I first started it up, had a little bit of shader cache stutter, but after the first lap, everything's super smooth. So we just saw some GameCube games running with the Dolphin emulator, and here's Wii. Same kind of performance here, 1440p, Vulcan back in. You might notice that this game is only at 30fps, and this is what it ran at on original hardware. And unfortunately with this one, I forgot to turn V-Sync on, so you will see some screen tearing. But with V-Sync on, you won't see any of that on your own system. Moving up a little bit to Wii U with the SimU emulator. I'm still using the Vulcan back in here because we have that AMD GPU and it just performs much better. Ever since the devs have implemented Vulcan, it's run really well on these APUs. And as you can see here, we got Mario Kart running at 60 FPS. I think I had a few stutters here and there, but that's just my shaders not being cached all the way. This was kind of the first time I started this game up on this system. So you will see some stutters, but once that's cached, it'll run at 60 all day. Breath of the Wild, one that everybody wants to see running. Unfortunately, we just don't have the power to push this at 60 FPS, but 30 FPS still looks really good at 720p, and this system is more than capable of running it. I was really hoping we could push this to 60, but even if I lowered the resolution anymore, I'd get around 45, so I figured we'd make it look a little better and just stick with 30. Taking it up a notch from Wii U to PS3 with RPCS3 using the Vulcan backend, Tekken 6 runs really well. The easier to emulate games are going to function fine on this unit. Take a look at the CPU usage up in the top left hand corner. We're sitting around 82 to 85%, but with the next game you're going to see, we're going to peg this all the way out at 100 because it's a harder game to run, and that's Skate 3. And with Skate 3, we just don't have the CPU performance to push this at 60 FPS. You could lock this at 30 if you really wanted to, and then you'll get that PS3 feel with it. But personally, I think emulating this at 60 is definitely the way to go, and unfortunately, this little box just can't handle it. And finally, we have the Citra emulator. I figured I'd test it here. I was pretty sure it wasn't going to run at full speed because AMD doesn't have the greatest OpenGL performance. Even with the higher end 3400G overclocked, I can't get this to run at full speed. So in the end, the B-Link GTR is definitely doing a great job at emulation, and like I mentioned, if you want to do anything underneath what we saw in this video, it's going to run it just fine. Unfortunately, this is not a super high-end machine, so you will struggle with some PS3 and even some Wii U games, but overall, I think it does a great job, especially for its form factor. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the B-Link GTR, definitely check out my first video, and I'm also going to leave a few links in the description in case you want to pick one up. But like always, thanks for watching.